Jenny and Anton were done with their boxing training. That was their main hobby after computer games. And though they were the two gamers, no one dared to call them like that, as one could get a good crack in the mouth. They were returning back home when they saw a heartbreaking scene. A blind old man was trying to cross the road, but no one gave way to him and no one wanted to help. They approached him and asked where he needed to go. The grandpa replied that he needed a pharmacy to buy some medicine. Antoha grabbed the old man's hand while Genia blocked the road and they went to the pharmacy. The guys helped him to buy the medicine he needed and then escorted him home. The old man felt grateful for what they did and invited them to his house. Inside, the guys saw a lot of pictures of some game on the walls and realized the old man was also a gamer. The guy started asking him what this game was and how exactly he became blind. The grandpa replied that he used to be a pro crossout player. He had a garage where he crafted his first car entirely from scratch. It was this car in which he fought with many of the insanely upgraded cars. The sleek buggies were hard to aim at. Heavy all-terrain vehicles attacked from all sides and powerful tanks could simply destroy with a single shot. He had to dodge them all. Oh, and of course, the armored trucks, it was something else. The old man was telling this heartbreaking story with tears in his eyes. He clearly remembered some of the brightest moments of his victories. Once his older brother gave him a plan of a cool assembly for his birthday. And this exact car brought him glory. His rivals called him the Mad Tractorist. He became a renowned blogger and quickly gained 1 million subscribers on YouTube. But nothing ever happened so smoothly. The Mad Tractorist had a hater. It was a total waste of scumbag. This guy really didn't want to neither learn how to play cross out, nor how to build trucks in his garage. He just wanted more victories. But he always ended up losing to a more skilled gamer, the Tractorist. Once, the unsuspecting Tractorist was peacefully playing cross out, while his older brother was barbecuing on the street together with his parents. But suddenly, the Tractorist heard the brakes screeching and the sound of a powerful blow of the car. He hastily ran to the window and saw a horrible picture. A truck drove up to their backyard and mowed his entire family down. It was that same bastard and he was holding a spike bat in his hands. He then noticed the tractorist and rushed after him. The poor guy tried to hide inside the house, but the stock found him and beat him up brutally. After that, he stole all the blueprints from his account and deleted it along with his YouTube account. Dousing everything with gasoline, he set the whole place on fire and disappeared. But luckily, the tractor snapped out and managed to crawl out of the burning mansion. When the doctors cleaned his face at the hospital, they realized that he couldn't see anything because of the severe eye damage. The police never found the attacker, although from time to time, random gamers met him playing. Apparently, he was using VPN, thus no one could figure out where he was. Our boxer friends were simply stunned by the old man's heartbreaking story. They wanted to take revenge on this comeback. The grandpa reached somewhere and took out that very bat and showed it to them. Genia was very attentive and noticed that the bat had some engraving on it. The word was in English and read slaughterhouse. They googled the word and somehow realized where they could look for the scumbag. Returning to their house, they firstly developed a plan of their future actions. Initially, they downloaded Cross Out. Then they decided to assemble the car in full size according to the blueprints. They got quite lucky again as Anton's father worked at the military equipment dump. They came to his work time after time to allegedly play hide and seek while in reality, they were secretly looking for the necessary parts and assembling their combat vehicle, according to the crosshout drawings. They stole a welding machine, removed the weapons from some old self propelled guns, and found the ammunition inside the tank's cockpit. 
The old man was sitting at home when he heard the creak of the brakes. Someone knocked on the door and he opened. These were the two boxers. They escorted the grandpa to the vehicle and let him touch it. The old man stood speechless. In no time he recalled the combat vehicle from his loved game, Cross Out. The guys put the old man inside the truck and rushed out of the town. When they arrived at the slaughterhouse, they saw a combat vehicle parked in the barn. So they were not mistaking. The scumbag was definitely here. A stone flew through the window of the slaughterhouse. The scumbag ran out into the street, confused, and saw a boy standing behind the fence. He threw yet another stone, which directly hit his bald head. The scumbag got enraged. He jumped inside his combat machine and chased after the scoundrel. The speed was great, and the thug was about to crush him, but suddenly someone started shooting. He saw another combat vehicle and realized that it was an ambush. The fight ensued. They unloaded barrages of bullets at one another from the powerful machine guns, but the boxer's car was built better and they won. The scumbag laid in the wreckage of his vehicle, trying to stab the approaching rivals with his knife. The old man revealed his personality. The scumbag couldn't believe his eyes. The boxers poured gasoline all over the scumbag's body and gave a lighter to the old man. The scumbag began to beg of mercy, and the grandpa took pity on him and offered him one last fight and cross out. If the scumbag would win, they would let him go. But if the victory would go to the old man, the scumbag would have to surrender to the police and confess that he murdered the old man's family. The scumbag yes, agreed happily. Agree. To defeat a blind old-timer was a piece of cake. They sat down opposite each other now. and the old man quietly asked the guys to tell him where to turn and when to shoot. And the battle began. The teams were equal. There were plenty of losses from both sides. The boys were diligently telling the old man what he should do, and he was quite successful. Finally, the two rivals met, and the old man destroyed his opponent's vehicle with a well-aimed shot. The scumbag lost, but he didn't have any desire to surrender to the police. He pushed over the table and began to run. The guys called the police to the slaughterhouse. The policemen were highly perplexed, saying that they didn't know where to look for the suspect. The machine assembling sounds were coming down from some abandoned garage. The scumbag was assembling his death machine to take revenge on his enemies. Three years have passed. Anton was carelessly laughing at his friend's stories, while Bonnie was eating ice cream and bragging that she was playing her favorite game all through the night. Suddenly, Anton lost his smile, looking somewhere aside. Bonnie turned her head too and saw some terrible incident on the news. The newsman reported that a severe gunfight happened somewhere in the suburbs and someone's car was literally torn to pieces. But it wasn't a regular car crash, as the police found some missile fragments and minigun bullet cases all around the crime scene. Anton blamed himself for everything that's happened. If only he could pay more attention to his best friend, this whole situation could have been avoided. It all started when Anton and Genia went to their gaming friend's party. They all belonged to one same fraction and cross out, the children of the Dawn. Only the ones who could invent something new were accepted to this fraction. The group discussed a couple of new possible inventions for the game and went to have fun. They spent the whole evening playing different board games. But then, one girl, Bonnie, offered to play cross out for a wish. Everyone loved the idea and the guys went to their computers and launched their favorite game. Each of them already had a very boosted account, and initially they began to make fun of the only girl in the team. But when she logged into her account, they saw her car, and it became clear to everyone that Bonnie was anyone but a noob in the game. A fight ensued, and nobody wanted to lose as everyone knew that the wishes would be tough. When they were meeting Bonnie on the battlefield, smiles were instantly gone from their faces. Heavy chunks of iron were scattering in all directions. Armor was cracking to the seams when these arrogant kidders were getting in her way. The first ones to lose 
were the three friends from the Wait, fraction. Bonnie ready? thought of some hilarious wishes for them. Go one guy ahead, had to crawl out the window, another wow. one had to walk on all fours and eat cat food, while the third boy had to put on a swimsuit and dance lambada right on the table. Bonnie mocked these guys for a little more and then continued winning the game on her cool car, which looked like a Ferrari. Jenny was doing well, but he couldn't manage dodging all the mad girl's bullets. His car was also torn to shreds. With his stank face, the poor fella grabbed the skis and went out into the street. The passers-by stared weirdly at Jenny, while his friends were filming his pitiful attempts to slide down the asphalt road. Bonnie decided to slightly change her tactics. She entered her personal garage inside the game and put an armor-piercing cannon instead of the rocket launcher, because she realized that Anton's armored car was not so easy to defeat. The battle began. Antoho was driving around the map, firefighting with other players. Nobody wanted to lose, but the sleek girl felt insanely confident at the wheel. She used her favorite tactics. She hid behind the safe zone, waited until Anton would be distracted by other cars and attacked him from behind at the right moment. The poor guy was defeated. He blushed from shame. How was it possible to lose to a girl? Bonnie approached him with a shy smile on her face while he was standing still waiting for the insidious wish of the winner. But Bonnie simply asked him to become her boyfriend and grabbed him by the hand. When their friends returned home from a ski tree, Bonnie and Anton had already left. The two of them went for a walk together. On that day, their new relationship began, but his friendship with the old friends came to an end. Jenya called him over and over again, inviting him to take a walk or simply watch the TV together. But Anton was constantly refusing and making silly excuses, while in reality, he was hanging out with Bonnie. A couple of weeks later, Jenny realized that he lost a friend. He had nothing to do, so he decided to visit the mad tractorist. The guy noticed some kind of fighting vehicle near the old man's house and realized that something was wrong. He decided not to come closer and instead to quietly observe what would happen. In a couple of minutes, the two militants pulled the tractorist out of his house and forced him into the car. That same scumbag came out right after with the old man's computer in his hands. He dragged the computer inside the house, took out a Molotov cocktail and threw it into the tractorist house, and the gangsters disappeared. Jenny noticed a piece of paper which was probably dropped by the scumbag when he was taking out gasoline. It turned out to be some kind of gas station discount card which was just outside the city. In panic, Jenny rushed to his friend's house, but it was Bonnie who opened the door. She said that Anton was very busy and that he couldn't go out. Jenny demanded to call his friend, saying that this was a matter of life and death. Bonnie pretended as if she went to call Anton, leaving Jenny to stay at the threshold. A couple of minutes later, she returned back and repeated herself, saying that Anton refused to go out. Jenny went to the place where they hid their combat vehicle alone, silently scolding his so-called traitor best friend. The car started up with a half turn, and he drove to rescue the mad tractorist. When he got to the gas station, Jenny parked the vehicle and began to search all around the place in search of kidnappers' traces, but he didn't find anything suspicious. He then decided to ask the refueler if the guy had seen a bearded, arrogant old man in a strangely looking car. The worker replied that this old man was a regular guest here, that he often came to fuel the car and that he saw the guy leaving in the direction of the scattered landfill. Thank you, bro. Jenny thanked the man and drove to the mansion location. The gates were obviously closed and some strange sounds and voices were coming from the other side of the fence. Taking a rapid start, Jenny broke through the gate, crashing it and ended up on a landfill surrounded by the battle cars. He quickly realized it was a trap instead of the reverse. The shooting started, consequences of which you already know. Anton couldn't understand what was happening. How come that their battle vehicle was on the news? Bonnie assumed that someone could steal the car, but Anton rejected her guess, as nobody could know about their secret place, and went to search for his friend. Jenny was not at home. His mother complained that she hasn't seen him in two days. 
When he visited his friends from the fraction, they might have known something. But they, in surprise, started pointing at their PC screens, saying that Genia was online, playing cross out just as usually. They sent him a message in the chat, but he simply replied that he was alright and that he didn't want them to bother him anymore. Anton was confused. He went to Bonnie to tell her about this strange story and his friend. Her entrance door was shut open. He was about to enter, but the flares under his feet made him look closer. It was a setup with a grenade. He carefully stepped over the wire and looked around. Bonnie was not here. But suddenly, Jenny appeared from behind his back and tasered the poor guy. Anton heard Bonnie's voice through the darkness. He barely had enough strength to open his eyes. Bonnie was kneeling before Genia and cried, asking to let Anton go. But he couldn't get why she was calling Genia her daddy. Genia looked at him and started bragging how clever he was to revenge all his offenders like that. It turned out that Scumbag came up with a grandiose plan after he lost the fight to the blind tractorist. At first, he organized a gang from the same losers as he was. They began to organize illegal fights on their self-made vehicles here at this dump. And usually, someone died during these fights. This dirty business brought Scumbag a great sum of money, and he was fully ready to take revenge. He sent his daughter Bonnie, who should have just found out from the guys where the mad tractors lived. But everything went wrong from the point where Genia saw the blind tractor is being kidnapped. After crashing his vehicle, they captured him. Scumbag was preparing himself for the brain transplantation surgery. It was that part of the brain which was responsible for the gamer's reflexes and thinking. The professor suggested to use Genia's body as a container for Scumbag's brain. The old guy agreed to the experiment and they transplanted the villain's brain and a piece of the tractor's brain into Genia's young body. Scumbag was about to deal with Anton, but his daughter was trying to prevent him from that. She stood right in between the two rivals and tapped into her father's sore spot. Scumbag got a little nervous. Bonnie was continuing to press forward, and finally her father agreed for one last tournament in Crossout. If she won, Scumbag would let Anton go together with her, but in the case he won, his daughter would have to feed her beloved to sharks with her own hands. At the time, Scumbag had one of the most powerful vehicles in the game, adding to that the gamer's reflexes of the tractors and Jenny's young body. Bonnie played very well just as usual, but this time she got a very weak team. Scumbag saw a fierce battle in the distance and rushed there. It was the right decision. His team rounded Bonnie up and the poor girl was firing back as best as she could, but there were too many of them. And soon, with one last sniper shot, Scumbag finished her. Bonnie lost the game and Scumbag truly became the best player in the world. He stood there shaking in anticipation of how she would deal with Anton. She saw a gun, which laid around there on the table, while her father noticed that she was staring at it. 